Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the video you've been waiting for or never even knew existed. The question is, can you fit a PCM4 in place of a PCM3.1 into a Porsche? Let's find out. Last year you'll remember that I installed the Joy Auto system into the PCM3.1. And to be honest, I've been really happy with it. As a standalone product, it was really good. It was a shame that it was being held back by the PCM itself. I read about a guy that had actually successfully installed the PCM4 into a 991.1 vehicle. And to be honest, when I first read it, it felt like it was something that was way out with my comfort zone and I quickly forgot about it. But I had that nagging feeling that it would be nice to have something with a higher resolution, something that was more integrated, something with better touch and something that sounded a little bit better. And so it's at this point I need to introduce a new car to the channel. This is my wife's Cayenne 958.2, more affectionately known as Maxi. And it's this very nice VW, I mean Porsche, that has given me the courage to go ahead with it. And the very last 958.2s came with PCM4. This one's a later build, but it still came with PCM 3.1. If I compare that though with the 981, I think there's a way better chance of everything working in this car. And we can try it out here before we try it on the 981, which never had PCM4. Of course, it came in the 718. It's going to make a great test mule. And honestly, not once did it cross my mind that I might mess up my own car. That's not why I'm using the Kaya. I mean, honestly, it's not. I'm going to pull the PCM 3.1 out of this. Very easy. You take the air vents out and then there are four bolts that are moved. Disconnect everything. And we're going to compare the PCM 3.1 with the PCM 4 that I've bought on the bench. Let's go do it. On the face of it, they're very similar. They're about the same size and shape. They look quite similar. The key difference being that the 4 doesn't have the, the visible frame and therefore it looks a little bit better. It will definitely modernise the cabin. But the key difference is the resolution in the screen is obviously much better. And of course the introduction of CarPlay and possibly Android Auto as an OEM solution. They both work in the same way in terms of software. They use codes to unlock various features associated with the vehicle and they're both locked to the VIN number of the vehicle. But it's when you come around the back you notice that there are probably more differences and similarities. They're using different quad lock systems. 52 versus 40 on the old 3. In the quad lock 40 setup you can see that the most connection is integrated within the quad lock and it's now separate. Sound wise PCM4 can be coded to accept a most bus connection to an amp or can amplify internally. However they are using a slightly different connection and most protocol. So whether or not PCM will work with an existing Bose or Burmeister setup is unknown at this point. In my case though, I'm dealing with the ASK amplifier setup which should be simpler to configure with a line level converter or similar. The factor connections are compatible but they sit at slightly different angles so will require adapters. And likewise the antenna for the FM and GSM connections which are now, as you can see, doubled up. The plan then is very simple. I'm going to use these adapter harnesses to make my own custom loom. We'll merge them together so that I don't have to modify the existing wiring harness in the vehicle. I'm also going to use these adapters to alleviate the issues that I mentioned with the FACRA and antenna connectors. And then here it is, the customised adapter loom. One end connects to the PCM4 and the other to the wiring harness. Unfortunately there is no dedicated remote wire coming out of the PCM4 for the amplifier that I have. 
And so I'm using this line level converter to actually power up the amp. We're gonna go and try it out on Maxi. installed I can see that I'm not receiving all the CAN messages necessary as you can see there's no trip data coming from the cluster it's not getting all the CAN bus messages through so apparently the fix for that is to update the software in the cluster so that is what we're about to attempt now wish me luck Uh, a short update. It's not going well. I've tried to flash the cluster three times and I'm getting absolutely nowhere. 25%, 20%, 15%, it varies. But it's not working. I've tried everything. What makes matters worse is that I've tried to revert the software back to what it was and it won't do that. The positive is that I can see the mileage there and it is letting me flash it. So, so it's still alive, it's just not functioning. But we can't use the car, it doesn't look like anything else is working on it. Um, and the right hand side is completely blank. Even when you turn the key you get absolutely nothing. Not good. But yeah, I'm not looking forward to telling my wife that she can't use her car. I'll be in the same state as the cluster. This is not good. Um, if anyone would like to put me up for a few nights that would be great. I might need that. But I don't know what else to do at this point. Honestly, I've got no doubt in my mind that a new cluster for this is going to cost thousands. I'm going to stop for tonight, do a bit of research, I don't know what else to do. Good morning guys, I'm in a better mood today. I'm not going to lie, I had a pretty rough night last night, I didn't sleep all that well. I thought I'd broken the car and I thought I had a very big bill coming. However, it's true what they say, a problem shared is a problem halved. I reached out to some people that were significantly more competent than I. I explained what happened and I asked for help and they were really good and they basically said that they think there's an issue with the programming tool that I was using and unbelievably this is this is just amazing someone who I've never met before has agreed to help me by lending me a different programming tool and they are confident that this is going to work and that I'm going to be able to complete the project fingers crossed let's go for it take two <laughs> now showing the temperature and it knows that the ignition's been on for six minutes okay it's communicating amazing yes 
Okay, great news. The cluster is working and the PCM4 is getting all of the information it needs from the cluster. However, we still need to resolve the issue I mentioned at the beginning of the video with the VIN and we need to make sure that all of the codes in the PCM4 match that of the vehicle so that everything works. I'm going to do that now. Two ways of doing it. You can pay someone in the VW or ID community to do it for you, a modest fee, I think that's okay. But if you look hard enough, the information is there for you to go and do it yourself and it's completely free. I'm going to go with the latter. Wish me luck. So then guys, we've done it. PCM4 installed into a car with PCM 3.1. Awesome, I'm over the moon. I never thought I'd be able to do this, but a little bit of faith and a bit of, bit of help along the way, and we got there. I can't wait to use it. It's really gonna modernize and make this car more usable. This is a great mod, especially for those of us with naturally aspirated flat six engines that don't want to enter into the turbocharged and EV era. GT4s and GT3s aren't easy to come by. And of course I've decided to do this in the 981 and it's going to be covered in part two of the video along with some of the teething issues I've got here. One of the issues is park assist. I'm going to have to replace the module. I'm going to do that. The other issue is surrounding the steering wheel controls. So uh, you've got this for the volume on the PCM normally and that is your menu in the, in the cluster. The problem I have is that the this control is controlling the menu in the cluster and the volume and we need to switch it to this one. So I think it's a coding issue but I might need a new steering control module so I'm going to look into that. But thanks very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video today. I think I deserve a like and hopefully a subscribe and we'll see you for part two. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. What I'd like to do is supply PCM4 units which are coded and customised for the individual and I'd like to supply a customised loom to go along with that in a brand store. For those of you who are crazy enough to do this yourself, and I'm glad that there are some of you who are like that, I'm happy to help. I ask two things. The first is that you subscribe to the channel and the second is that you give a donation to the channel using the super thanks button below. Don't underestimate the development costs that went into this one behind the scenes and I would appreciate it and it will help us grow and do more. I can't do the cluster codings for obvious reasons, but what I'm hoping to do is set up a network of people in the UK and further that can help us with that. Thank you.